Hello, students. So, the next day. The first video of this week was very long, and I mean the very long 45 minutes. And I have still to do vector fields in polar coordinates. And there I want to, to, to pay attention to the following, that uh, very often the, the, the radius is defined as a function of the angle. Uh, and let, I will also write down here in theta, because in Adams is also written down in theta, sometimes I will use a phi. But that yeah, sometimes I, I not always be careful in that to do just one. But what I want to say to you is that uh, if you have the radius as a function of a theta, you can see it as a full, you can you can see to you can look to it at two things. First of all, that the horizontal axis that that is the ra the axis of the angle, and that you have here the, the axis of the radius and that means that you uh, in polar coordinates uh, you have in certain sense and i will not always say that but uh, sometimes you you have your angle between zero and two pi and you can go further on with it that that doesn't matter uh, but the radius is always positive so you will be always be on the upper side of that one, and if you and you can uh, make here construct here some curve, some function, and then you have here that the the radius is some function of the angle, but uh, we look most of the time we look in the xy plane and then you have something else then then you have the angle is always measured from the positive part of the x-axis so you have here your angle and then uh, to this angle you have some radius and so you have here this part here, the length of this vector, that is the radius, that is depends on the angle. And that and these two things are are, uh, are, are, are something else. Yes, be careful by looking that from be always uh, sure that you are or in the xy plane or in that other polar coordinates in, in your theta r plane so that there are two things you how you can look to it and then for instance uh, if you have then an, an vector fields given by um, no no so yes um, um, and if you are in the xy plane um, you have the, the axis, the, the x direction and the y direction. That that is the, the, the so you have those unit factors, but you have also uh, certain unit factors of your uh, from your polar coordinates, and those are the following, and that I will. Put beside because otherwise the, the the sketch becomes too busy and we don't know anymore what we are doing. So um, and in the in the polar coordinates, what uh, what do we have? Uh, so we have still the x y plane. You have to hear the origin, but then if you have some points. Yeah, what do you do? You have 
you have in the polar coordinates also some unit vector. That is, for instance, this vector here. This goes in the direction of the radius. And if you have here some theta, then that unit vector, um, let's give it the name u1, of, or no, let me take the, the, the same name as the uh, as Adams uses, uh, the r, that r vector is the cosine of theta times i plus the sine of theta times j, and then the i and the j are the unit vectors of the xy plane. Yes, you, so you have here i, and there you have the j, and, uh, and you see here also, so, so you have the, the vector cosine theta sine theta, and you see that the length of this vector is equal to 1. And then you have a nice unit vector. Now, the ang the, the, in the angle direction, that vector stays perpendicular to that angle in the r direction. So there you have a unit vector. Um, uh, it has to stay perpendicular. I see that my y component is positive and my x component is negative. So I think minus the sine of theta times i plus the cosine of theta times j. And you see also that they are uh, that they are perpendicular to each other. And uh, you see also the, uh, that you have the r direction uh, and then if you take an angle of a positive pi divided by 2, you go to the unit vector of the, the angle. And now the, the, the picture is not so nice because they have not, but the, here this one has also the length 1. So you have the r direction and you have the theta direction. So, but then we look in the xy plane. Yes, be careful. Um, then an, an other thing, um, and that is the following. And just to make that clear to you to, to, for, for this polar coordinates, uh, if we are in the x and y direction, be careful. Uh, if you have some point here, you have some angle, you have some radius, now then you can make a step in the direction of the radius, that is your dr term, no problem. You can also make a step in the theta direction. So here you have your theta, your d theta, uh, yeah, your d theta. This is your d theta. But be careful uh, if you make a step in the angle direction. You you are going about some circle, and the length of this here is equal to the radius times d theta. So you have not only a d theta, but if you look in the x in the xy plane, you get you if you are further away of the origin and you make a little step in the angle, that path will always be greater. And if you are a, a lot further off that you will see also that uh, I hope that you also see that if you make the same step d theta if you are sitting on this point here, the, the, the step is much greater, and that depends on your radius. And that means that you, uh, the, the length of that step there is the radius times d theta. Now, 
and um, let's now look to some example. For instance, if is given uh, an vector field in polar coordinates, so it's given in the range and the angle, and if they uh, give it as one times the unit vector in the r direction and one times the unit vector in the theta direction. Now let's see how that vector looks in the xy plane. Then we have the following zero and here I have x and there I have y. Um, now if I have some point here uh, from the origin to that point, that is the, the R direction. And so you see that you make a step one in the R direction, that vector field here, you see one in the R direction, so you have one here, the length of that part, and the theta direction, and the theta direction is also one. And so you have here, this vector is your vector field. And now, uh, and if you take some other points, uh, let's take this point here. You have again, if you the the origin, if you make a an, line from the origin to the point, you have the r direction. And so, what do, what is this vector field doing? It gives a step in the r direction one and it gives a step in the theta direction of one. And so I see that I have here this part as a vector field. Now, uh, it is not so uh, nice, this one here, because uh, you don't see any difference almost. So I want to do it uh, over again. And then I want to, uh, I want to take the, the points a little bit lower to the, the, the one I take, one point I take in the neighborhood of the y-axis and the other point in the neighborhood of the x-axis, then you see more the difference. So you see, so you get one in the r direction, one in the theta direction. So you have as a result this vector here, and if you do the same here, you have one in the r direction, one in the theta direction, and you see the vector field goes that way. And so, uh, and if you are on the y is x somewhere, some point, now you have one in the r direction, one in the theta direction and you get some vector which is staying almost uh, yeah, which stays perpendicular to your x-axis if you should uh, let that vector down you see that and so you see that changing that vector field and, and but then you are doing that that in the r direction so here you have the R direction and here you have the theta direction. R direction and here you have the theta direction. And here also R direction, theta direction. So, and now you can go on with that vector field, uh, do it yourself and look also in Adams. There is a nice picture given of that vector field. Okay, now, um, you see that that vector field is given. So uh, in polar coordinates, yeah, we will always write it as follows, that you have the r and the theta. No, sorry, I've, I will use the same r. And, uh, and then it will most of the time be given as the partial derivative to r times the 
R direction and I have to sorry that I have to look for it but I am using sometimes different R's and I have the partial derivative and then also some point R theta and then times the theta direction now um, if we look to that uh, to the xy plane then that vector fields you have here your vector fields and then as function of the r and the theta and uh, what is the case um, that that vector field is uh, we are searching field lines that is the case we want to know from if we take some point where is that point going to and uh, what uh, what do we have then then we have that the in the if you take the dr term and you divide by the partial derivative to, to r it has to be equal to and then it be, the, the, the the important thing comes you get here r times d theta divided by the partial derivative of r theta and so b uh, be aware of this r here that is important yes yeah? don't forget if you in if you are in the xy plane and you are making some step in the theta direction it the uh, uh, you saw already in in that picture the step you make depends on where you are sitting in the the, the, the in that plane if you are very far of the origin that the d step can be small but r the r can be very great and so therefore here be careful and um, and you see here also uh, maybe you can also do that um, that you have that the uh, if you have the if you are dividing the dr term by the step in the theta direction that it has to be equal to the partial derivative in the r direction divided by the the um, uh, yes divided by the the uh, partial derivative in the r direction and this has to be the case to, to keep in mind and you see that in that picture there uh, if you if, if you have those partial derivatives of the vector field in the r in the theta direction if, if you divide the the, the r uh, then the 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 direction of the the, the tangent vector uh, and uh, the, the the coefficient of the the the, di the direction coefficient of the tangent vector has to be equal to, has to relate to this what I have written down here on paper. Okay, be careful. Now, um, if you, yeah, you have here your field line, and then uh, that that vector field will be uh, is a such as a tangent vector of the of the field line. And then be careful.
Um, in the case that we have that vector field, which we have just uh, made some, we, we tried to sketch that vector field R theta, and this your one in the R direction and one in the theta direction. Now, if you are searching the, the field lines, what kind of equation do we have? Then we have that dr divided by 1 has to be equal yeah, the, the, to the r d theta divided by 1. That were, were the partial derivatives of that vector field. And what do we have? Uh, we get by uh, putting the r variables to one side and the theta direct uh, the variables to one side, separating of the variables, we have that the uh, ln of the radius becomes equal to 1 plus some constant. And uh, the radius is always positive, so I am not writing down the ln of the absolute value of r because I know my r is already positive, so the, the ln exists. No problem. And then, uh, uh, sorry, and then uh, not one a stupid guy. I have to integrate both things to r and to theta. And so if I integrate, the left hand side becomes the ln of r, and the right hand side becomes theta plus some constant. Don't do so such stupid as I have done just before. And if we want to have the, the radius of function of theta, we see here that the radius as function of theta becomes equal to some constant times e to the power theta. And here we see our radius as function of theta. And here again, uh, we, we take the exponential power of this part here, and you can write it out as the exponential of c times the exponential of theta and exponential of c is again a constant so i'm writing down c times that yes and because it is just a constant and And so if you want to, to make some sketch of that the, of those uh, field lines, now what do we have then uh, if you are sitting somewhere in the xy plane and you have here the origin you you sitting somewhere now you you have some radius you have some theta and then the the radius becomes as a uh, as an exponential function of theta so uh, if your theta grows it the radius will grow exponentially so it will become greater and greater and greater so you have here this one, uh, you see that your radius becomes some constant times the exponential of the angle, and so you have you get some spirals. And so if you have somewhere else, you are sitting here, also, and then you have also how far or how if your theta increases, your radius grows exponentially. And so we have spirals. See the nice picture of atoms. So, B 
aware of that R in that if you want to calculate that, that those uh, field lines be aware of that R, keep in mind. Now, that is the last part of section 15.1, so that 15.1 we, uh, we do from the beginning to those uh, vector fields in polar coordinates and the other part you can let away. And I see that I have almost one and a half hour to this part and I thought it should go faster. So I will stop with this part and then I will make a next part and we will ask ourselves what are conservative vector fields. So and that will be chapter 15.2 of Adams. So that will be the next question. What are conservative vector fields and what can we do with it?